Hi, I'm Ashley Doyle from Crinkly Quilts. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the steps I use to make one of these adorable quilted sleep sacks. Before we start, make sure you use the link in the description below to head to my shop and download the free PDF that goes along with this tutorial. It will have the templates and just some basic instructions to help you follow along. Now let's stop wasting time and get started. Over the materials you'll need for your quilted sleep sack. First, you are going to need to print your PDF out and print your templates out at 100%. There's three templates for this pattern. There's a front top, a back top, and an eight inch circle. So print those out at 100%, chest your one inch square and cut them out. Then you are going to need a quilt that is at least 36 inches by 40 inches a fat quarter for binding and trim, a 22 inch zipper. I like the bag zippers, they have a nice wide zipper tape and so um, it covers those raw edges really nicely. Then you will also need a tape measure, sewing pins and sewing clips, a rotary cutter and rotary mat, scissors, a nice ruler. This one is 24 and a half inches by six and a half inches, but really anything that's kind of large is really useful. You'll need a, a water soluble pen or a fabric marking pen, something that is either heat erased or you can wipe away something that will disappear. This is a blue water soluble pen. And then you will also need cam snaps and cam snap pliers. Now, if you don't want to invest in cam snaps, then you can also use a uh, sew on Velcro. That is totally fine also, um, but just something to kind of keep that zipper down across the chest of the sleep sack. You'll also need an iron and ironing board and a sewing machine. And that sewing machine, you should also have a zipper foot for it for when you do the zipper. All right, that's it, let's get started. Let's go over how to cut our templates out of our quilt. So right now I have my quilt folded. This is my 36 inch way, and then the fold is on the 40 inch direction. So it should measure 36 inches by 20 inches this way. So what I did is I just did a whole cloth quilt and I took a yard of fabric, quilted it, and that's it. So um, now you're supposed to be using your water soluble marking pen I tried it on camera and you couldn't even see it. So we're going to be using a Crayola marker just for this. So please don't mark your fabric with Crayola marker. I'm doing that just for you guys. So anyways, I'm going to line up my template right here where the fold is on the folded edge of the fabric. I'm just going to trace. Oh yeah, that's much better. You guys can see that. I'm going to trace my template. There we go. And I'm just going to trace the bottom. I'll put it right there. Okay. Now you're going to take your tape measure and you're going to measure from this point on the neckline, the bottom of the neckline, down 30 inches. So I'm going to hold my right there. And that's right here is where 30 inches is. So I'm going to mark that point. Now I'm going to take my ruler and then on my 11 inch line, at zero is over here, 11 is right here, I'm going to lie that 11 inch mark um, right next to that fold and I'm going to mark where that goes and I'm just going to draw a line connecting that 30 inch point to the 11 inch mark. There we go. All right, so now we have the bottom of our sleep sack is marked, and then our neckline is marked, and the top of our template is there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my ruler, and I'm going to connect the bottom of the template, or the sleep sack, with where the template marked line is. And I'm just going to draw that right there. And a nice swoop down. There you go. So what you're going to do now is just cut that out while it's folded. So you're gonna cut around here, and that will be the back of your sleep sack, and then I'll show you how to use the circle template. But first, let's move this, and 
I will show you how to cut the top or the front of the sleep sack. So it's kind of the same thing. We get our template lined up right there. Let's see, is this edge? Is the row? It's at the fold. So this is the open edge of our quilt. So I'm just going to trace. So there my top is traced. Then I'm going to take my measuring tape and from this bottom portion of the neckline right here this indent I'm going to measure 27 inches down so I have this lined up right here go down 27 inches and I'm going to mark that point there we go okay now I'm going to scooch this up so I can get that back on my cutting mat and now the other side was 11 inches in this side is 11 and a half inches in so, right here I have 11 and a half inches. There's zero. So I'm going to line up. Oh my goodness. I'm going to move away from the wall. Line up my 11 and a half inch mark with the edge of my quilt. And then I'm going to mark that zero point and just draw that line right there all the way to the edge. Perfect. And then let's bring it back. And then I have this. I'm just going to connect the edge of where my template marking is down to the bottom of my sleep sack. All right, now I'm going to cut these out. You can either use a rotary cutter if you feel confident with doing that because there's a couple curves. Or you can use your scissors. I'm actually going to just use my rotary cutter and cut those out. So here we have our back piece. You can see it's a nice one piece. I'm gonna keep it folded. I'll move this out of the way actually. My scraps. I'm gonna keep it folded. And I'm gonna show you how to use the eight inch circle. So I'm gonna take this circle, I'm gonna line it up so that the corners of the circle just kind of meet into the corner of the sleep sack. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my marking pen and then I'm just gonna draw that curve. Right there. So it's a nice curve right there on my sleep sack. And that is going to be how we round the corners. So I'm just going to cut that. Now you can use scissors, but I'm feeling brave today. So I'm just going to use my rotary cutter. Go nice and slow when you're doing these curves in these areas without um, scissors with your rotary cutter. There you have it. That's how we get that nice curved edge. Now what I'm, I'm going to do the same thing on the front of my sleep sack, but what I'm going to do is also I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew an eighth of an inch right around with a, like an, a longer stitch length. So somewhere between, I'd say 3.5 and a 4 would be just fine. Just to hold that fabric together, especially if your quilt is more loosely quilted. That way there's no like flipping up of your top fabric. And then you just kind of have a weird area where you can see the batting is just to keep that nicely stitched down. I just like to do a top stitch around the edges of the quilt. Okay, so we're going to do the rounding of this top piece too, the top pieces. So we're going to take your 8-inch circle, get it right there into the corners. Take your marking pen, mark that curve. Right there. 
Here's our marker. And then you can use scissors or I'm just going to use my rotary cutter and just cut that out nice and slowly. Keep your fingers out of the way. We don't want any accidents here. There we go. If you're not confident with a rotary cutter, please don't, please don't do what I do. All right, so then we have our two front top pieces. They're mirrored images because we cut them opposite. So that's how it's gonna go. And then, like I said, I'm just gonna take this to my sewing machine. I'm gonna sew a nice eighth of an inch in from the edge just to keep all that fabric down. And then we'll get our zipper in there. Next, you're going to take your fat quarter and then from the bottom of your fat quarter, you're going to cut a three inch section. So your fat quarter measures 21 inches by 18 inches. Cut three inches off and then from your three inch section, you are going to cut two three inch sections by six and a half inch. So these are both three inch by six and a half inch. These we will use for our snap the fabric for the snap that goes across the top of the sleep sack and also to just cover the raw edges of our sleep sack inside below the zipper. And then we're going to take the rest of our fat quarter. We're going to cut it for our binding of the neckline and the, um, the neckline and the sleeves. So you're going to take your fat quarter, what's the rest of it, with the three inch section cut off, and you're gonna line on the top edge the 45 degree line on your ruler. And you're gonna take your rotary cutter and you're just going to cut that like so. So this part, you can just take that off, we'll use that later. And then I like to do two inch little binding strips. So then I'm going to just cut these into a couple two inch binding strips. Let's start with four. And then we'll cut more if we need it. So we're going to take our sleep sack right sides together. This is the front of it. And we're going to mark a little spot four and a half inches up from the bottom of our sleep sack. So that would be right here. Just give that a good mark. Oops. Oops. Okay, four and a half inches up from the bottom of our sleep sack right here. Give that a good mark. What we're going to do is we're going to take this to our sewing machine. And we're going to sew a basting stitch, so a longer stitch length of about six millimeters uh, from the top of our sleep sack down to this marked line. So, um, and you're going to use a half inch seam allowance. This notch in here is a half inch. I'm going to sew all the way down to this marked line. Once you get to the marked line, change your stitch length to a three or 3.5 millimeters. You're going to secure your stitch or uh, and then sew forward stitch back stitch and then sew to the bottom of your sleep stack forward stitch back stitch so everything is secured then you're going to press your sleep sack open and we will install our zipper Okay, I got to my marked line, so I'm going to decrease my stitch length and I'm going to use a 3.0 stitch length. I'm going to do a securing stitch, back stitch a little bit, and then cut my pants. I'm going to take this to my ironing board and press my seam open. We have the front of our sleep sack. It's pressed open, our seam that we just did. And we're going to find our marked line right here, and that is where we are going to put the stopper portion of our zipper. 
So that lines up right there. And then our zipper just gets nested right in that seam all the way up to the top of our sleep sack. So let's just pin that in place. zipper is pinned in place. Now we're going to go sew this down. I really like the wider zipper tapes for this because it's going to cover that entire raw edge. You're not going to have any, any of this in your, your sleep sack. It's all going to be covered. Um, but if you do use a zipper that has a smaller zipper tape, just like one of these, um, you can have it install it at the first seam and then go along and trim your seam allowance shorter so that it is covered by the zipper tape. It's just an extra step. That's why I prefer the wider zipper tapes for this project. Let's go install that. We're installing our zipper. To begin, you're going to want to have your zipper foot on your machine and lower your zipper just on the opposite side that or so that you uh, don't have any issues. I'm going to move my needle over just a little bit. Right there, so I can get nice and close to that zipper tape. I'm gonna do some securing stitches. Once you get down close to where this zipper is now, we are going to lift our presser foot, keep your needle in the down position, and just kind of work it up back to the top. our zipper foot so it's the other way. Okay. Same thing. We're going to lower our zipper to begin with. harder because we're going to try and get that zipper back up to the top but we already sewed the other side shut so you might need to maneuver a little bit let's flip that foot a little bit more come on squeeze we're almost there there we go we should be able to get past that now Now that we have our zipper down, what we're going to do is we're going to come back and stitch really close to the edge of our zipper just to secure it down. You can keep your zipper foot on for this if you'd like. Now that you've sewn in your zipper, it's time to take your handy dandy seam ripper 
and rip apart those basting stitches. So you're going to go all the way down to your bottom of your zipper. Okay, right there. There's the bottom of my zipper. That's where my good stitches start, or my securing stitches start. So then you can just pull all these threads out, trim your threads from sewing, and then admire your beautiful zipper that you have installed. Right here. There's the front of your sleep sack. Take your three inch by six inch pieces, and fold it in half, right sides together, and you're just going to sew down one long side and across one short side with a quarter inch seam allowance. And do that with both pieces. Okay, we're gonna turn these. You can press your seam open um, at the ironing board to begin with, but I just like to, to turn them. So I have a chopstick, and that's actually how I use, <laughs> I turn them. Um, you can get like a turning tool, but I just, I don't turn enough things to ever do that. So. I like to poke those corners out and then I take it to the ironing board and I just iron it flat. So here I have my two three inch by six and a half inch pieces that I have sewn, turned right side out and pressed. I'm going to take one of them, we'll use this one, and what you're going to do is just align it down at the bottom of your zipper and the, the rest is going to just hang off your sleep sack and that's fine but you what we want to do is just sew this in place so you can pin it um, right in place where you want to stitch it just to secure it and put one down at the bottom too And this is just to cover those raw edges of the sleep sack. So there's no going to be no fraying or anything there. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to start here at the bottom. I'm going to secure it with a back stitch, forward stitch, go up, across, down, and secure it again. So it's just going to be nicely secured in place. Now you can stitch across this area right here, but what I'm just going to do is cut it uh, to be even with the bottom of the sleep sack. So you just trim the rest of that off. Here I have the back of my sleep sack, and what I'm going to do is take one of my pieces of bias binding, it stretches, and what I'm just going to sew it with a quarter inch seam allowance, unfolded, so just open how I cut it to the neckline of my sleep sack. I'm gonna go all the way around. do 
So we're going to take our sleep sack, we're going to fold this binding that we did in half kind of to where the, the neckline is. And then we're just going to press it down like so. And it might have a little bit of a wrinkle to it. That's okay. Just try and manipulate it with your fingers. And I like to give it a nice press with my iron and then clip it down with some sewing clips and then take it to my machine for top stitching. do the bias binding on the neckline so right here is where the zipper starts to cover the uh, the raw edge so that's where I want to go to that's where I want my binding to be so I have a piece of uh, binding I'm gonna sew with a quarter inch seam allowance I'm gonna drop my zipper down a little bit because we don't want to get into any issues there and we're just gonna sew with a quarter inch of seam allowance all the way down to where our zipper tape starts, right there. Okay, so I'm going to start by pressing this side up, flip it over. Fold it down so it's nice and flat. Okay, then I'm just gonna take some scissors. I'm just gonna trim it about, I'd say, three quarters of an inch to an inch away from where I stop sewing. And that is just going to be, I like to kind of just fold it like this. Just try to get it even. Hope you can, you can't really see what I'm doing. I'll move this. Okay. So I'm just going to fold it over and just, you know, try to make it as pretty as possible right there. It's a nice little edge and then you're gonna just clip that down I'm gonna get some heat on it get it nice and crisp grab some sewing clips clip that in place I like to just make sure that all my little extra is tucked in there so there's no raw edges nothing's gonna fray just put a handful of clips on it. Okay, let's take it back to our sewing machine and we're just going to top stitch along there and we'll be done with one side. stitch down. I'm going to trim my threads and do the other side. Being to one of the sleeves. So we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to go along the edge with a quarter inch seam allowance.
Great, now we're just going to cut off this top part and this bottom part so that it's even with our sleep sack and finish all our sleeves and we will be ready to put our whole thing together. The next thing we are going to do is install our cam snap fabric. So you can either start on the left side or the right side. I tend to like it on the left. I want it to go like right across where the, the zipper is to hold it down. And so what I'm going to do at first is kind of decide how far across I want it to be. So I want it to be, I like this distance right here. So then I am going to sew it down right here and just add about an extra three quarters of an inch to an inch. So I'm going to trim off a bit of extra fabric there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right here with a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to secure it down. Lift it up just a touch, right? Right about there. So it's about, I'd say, an inch away from my zipper. Now what I'm going to do, where's my little snippers? Snip this little thread. There we go. I'm going to fold it across to how I would like it. And so you can see where my fabric is right here. I'm going to enclose that completely. So I'm gonna fold it across to where I like this to be. And I'm going to start about an eighth of an inch in front of where it's sewn already. And I'm gonna go down just the same way I did before. And then I'm gonna turn, get this all in here. So there you can see that raw edge is all enclosed. And then we're going to get our cam snap supplies out and I will show you how I do the cam snap. So I have my cam snap supplies out. You will need a, um, a set of cam snaps. I'm going to use green for this. And so you need one that is the female part and one that is um, the male part. That's the male part. So they fit together, you know, just like so. And then you'll both need also two of these just flat ones with a little pokey on it. So two of those. I'm going to use green for this project. The link to the cam snap set I bought is in the description below. Um, but you can also use sew on Velcro or a sew on button if you'd rather not buy a cam set or cam snap set. So I'm gonna set those pieces aside. Then the cam snap set I got, it comes with this uh, pokey that you just poke through the fabric. So this is what I do as I decide where I want my cam snap to be. Now you could measure it out and find where the center is on here, but I'm not that fancy. So I just poke it through to both sides, give it a nice twist. And that's where I want my can snap to be. So you're going to take the flat edge and then either the female or the male piece for this. So this is the female piece. I'm just going to use that. Get it nice in there. 
And then you have your pliers. So this black part goes on the flat piece and this rubber part goes there and you're just gonna squeeze as hard as you can. There you go. And that smushes it down so it's nice and secure. Now we see I have my other hole right here that I just made. My flat piece goes on the back through that hole. Get it nice and through there. And then my male piece goes in here. And I'm gonna unzip this a little bit so I can get my pliers in there good. Here we go, and squeeze. There you have it. Zip it up and let's see if it works. There we go. Perfect. The first portion we are going to sew together is we are going to sew our top of our sleeves. So just line them up, get your sewing clips, and clip them in place. Just like this. And with a quarter inch seam allowance, we're just gonna sew along the top here. Make sure to secure it with a forward stitch back stitch to begin and end. So now we have this raw edge up here. You can zigzag stitch along that just to make sure that it doesn't fray or to prevent more fraying. Um, but what I do is I like to open it up nice and flat, press this seam towards the back and just try and stitch it down a little bit to make it a little less bulky. Now that we have the top of our sleep sack put together, we are going to clip around the body of our sleep sack just to keep that in place. And then we are going to sew that with a zigzag stitch all the way around and then just a quarter inch seam allowance to finish it off. Um, if you have a serger, that would work as well too. I don't have a serger, so I'm just going to zigzag stitch to make sure that I can prevent fraying as much as possible and then straight stitch to secure it.
great. We just finished going around the edges of our sleep sack and let's turn it right side out and see how we did. Just reach in, loosen that zipper. Pull it right side out. And let's check all our seams. My shoulders look good. Just gonna kinda give it a nice tug around the edges of the body. Poke out these rounded edges. Yeah, that all looks nice and secure. Awesome. Great. Just need to go through, snip any final threads that I find. I still have to pull out some of these threads from my basting stitch when installing my zipper. But my sleep sack is done. Now that we're done, just make sure your baby fits comfortably in their sleep sack. I know that my son stays nice and toasty warm all through the night in his. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for more content like this and have a great day.